Shalom, people. This is Brother Laws coming at you with another video. And as we get closer and closer to the return of our Messiah, Yeshua Mashiach, and his coming kingdom, we know that the Bible said in the book of Daniel that knowledge would increase and men would run to and fro. And Yeshua also stated in the Gospels that that which had been hidden should be revealed. That which was speak, spoken in secret in the, in, your, in the closet would be broadcast upon the rooftop. But what we must understand as in all things that are coming out in the times that we're living in, that all things are not of the Father. All wisdom that is coming forth, all knowledge and understanding that's coming forth unto us now is not all from the Father. And we want to key in on this thing of wisdom. For the most part, wisdom is supposed to be something that comes from a learned experience. And therefore, a lot of times wisdom is equated with those who are, you know, up in age as myself. And in fact, the um, Bible states that the glory of the the hoary head or the, the man or woman who has gray hair is their wisdom. That is the, the glory. That can be uh, looked at in two ways. We must make sure that the wisdom that we are receiving, whether it's from the, the agent or whether it's from uh, the, the technology now that... Uh, gives us access to a lot of wisdom. We must make sure that that wisdom is not from below. We must make sure that that wisdom is not from below. What I mean, James, the third chapter, starting at verse one, says this. He said, but if ye have bitty, bitter envy and strife in your hearts, Glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easily to be um, entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality, and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. We know that um, one of the things that Solomon was blessed with, even though he did not have that, the age is that he was, he was blessed by the Most High with wisdom because he asked for wisdom, because he said, I'm yet a young man thrust into the uh, kingship of my father, David, and I do not have the wisdom that my father gained through his years of experience to take charge of this kingdom. And therefore, Yah gave Solomon the gift of wisdom. But the problem that Solomon had was he uh, had to, or the Most High made it available for him to go out and gain that wisdom. He gave basically Solomon the ability to take um, knowledge and different things, consume it, and then out of that gift that he gave Solomon to decipher it and to put it into uh, put it into action. But the problem is 
um, Solomon uh, develop a hunger for wisdom in general. And that caused him to go out to outside sources to gain the wisdom of the, the surrounding nations. And when he consumed this, this wisdom was not um, from the Most High. It was not the wisdom that the Most High was blessing him with from above, giving him that knowledge on how to run the kingdom, on how to judge the people. Solomon went out to get earthly wisdom that was just like what James told us about. He said the wisdom that is um, from below is an earthly and a sensual and a devilish wisdom. But it can also appear in a religious connotation because what you see in the case of Solomon, the Bible said that he loved many women and these women that he cohabited with were worshipers of other deities. And so Solomon gained the wisdom and the knowledge of these religions, of these people, society, and the, the power of the draw of the, the earthly wisdom was so much so that it, it pulled on the natural inclination for the flesh to do the things of sin because we know that the earth was cursed. Therefore, anything that is coming up out of it, right, it is something that will have a tug on the flesh because our flesh is of the earth. We are made of the dust of the earth and it has a pull and it has such a pull that it eventually pulled Solomon away from the desire to have the wisdom from above because it was both of them were so in his mind, in his spirit, so equally on the same plane because he said it's earth, it's also sensual. And this is the problem that we have in that sometimes spirituality is actually sensuality, right? And a lot, because if you if you if you look at the um, the con the the Kundali, the Kundalini um, movement per se that's going on here in America, which Kundalini has to do with Hindu religions where they basically are um, electrifying the the your chakras, which is dealing with re reanimating that fault that the the fallen state that Adam and Eve were were in were in you know they could probably teleport themselves they could read minds and all these different things abilities that they had that once we sin y'all made that stuff dormant but in a lot of uh, Indian religions they know how to reanimate that. But the problem is that is forbidden for us because now that the flesh is given over to sin, when you reanimate that in the flesh, demonics of uh, entities, earthly entities, sensual entities, devilish entities are going to take that. And with the uh, this part of the Indian religion dealing with the Kundalini, where they are able to reanimate these things and 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 and, and, ca and cause them to go into these excesses, you will see where they will start speaking, and um, and it'll look just like what you see in the, in some Pentecostal churches where they'll start speaking in tongues. They'll they'll say that they feel a sensation, and it'll be 
if you wouldn't know, if you was not a a sure bona fide believer, or even some believers, they would believe that, hey man, this these people are the these people are these Pentecostal believers because they exhibit the same thing. They exhibit the the the, the dancing, the shouting, the speaking, the the, the the elevated consciousness, all of this, because it is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Well, even in the midst of, and I was in the I, I was in the Church of God in Christ, and I can tell you this. Too, that they not condolini, but you have some people that would be in the midst of the services that they would uh, sometimes have what they would consider to be a spiritual experience that it was a Holy Spirit, but that you would have um, you would see some have a the a, the same solical experience that the people dealing with the Condolisi where they would think it was the um spirit but actually like I said your soul which is the uniter of your spirit and your your body it has a power that is dormant, but it can be activated by doing certain things. And sometimes you will see where the preachers, they will know, hey, that person is not operating in the spirit or whatever they're doing, whether they're praising or uh, speaking in tongues or whatever. And they said, can you, can someone please just, you know, pull them aside or whatever, because that's not the spirit. That's that's them, right? Because we know that the soul is the seat of your emotions of who you are. And that's why when Yeshua came along, he said, in order for you to um, follow him, you must take up your state or your cross daily and kill that fallen Adamic nature that wants to rise back up in you, even in that the spirit is dwelling in you, you have to be careful. It was a, a Chinese believer named Watchman Nee. He was very, very, um, uh, he was very, very, um, what's that word I'm trying to use? Um, King and understanding the difference between spiritual power and solical power. And I have several books that was written by him. And he, he came up with the con concept of solical power where he said he would sometimes see what he called Buddhas and different people because he was from China. He lived in China and he said he would see where they could get people to wall them up inside of a, a, a wall and they would go into some kind of state where they would wall them up inside this wall for 30 days. He said they would not eat or drink. They would just meditate for 30 straight days without doing anything. He said you would see how they could levitate and all this stuff. And all that was through solical power, through the power of the soul being reanimated outside of Yah dealing with it and the problem that we're going we're having now with this kind of uh, uh wisdom and knowledge that's going around this earthly and sensual and devilish wisdom even in this thing called the quote-unquote awakening or, or the um uh the or the hebrew Israelite movement is that there is a lot of solical wisdom going around where people are actually gaining wisdom and, and, and knowledge of, of stuff that is actually earthly, is sensual, is devilish. We can look back at um, the, 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 the scribes and the Pharisees, right? Where Bible states about the different um, 
traditions of men that they were teaching the people. They was giving them this earthly wisdom, but it was uh, sensual, it was devilish. It was not of the most high. It was it was not of a benefit for the people. And, and Yeshua said, you tying these people down with all these different things and those that can um, keep these things, like Paul was a, a good example. Paul was, he was well versed in keeping the laws and traditions of the fathers, so much so that he was able as a Pharisee to make good money because you even remember where Yeshua said, these guys sit on the corners and make long prayers for a penance and they devour, they devour widow houses and all these things. They was, they was doing that through earthly wisdom, sensual wisdom, wisdom from below that had no benefit. Because what it, verse 14 of, of James 3 says, he said, but the, that this kind of wisdom has bitter envy and strife. It causes bitter envy and strife in people's hearts. This kind of wisdom that comes along. I'm not talking about, obviously, if you are telling people of the truth and people are arguing with you against the truth, we're not talking about that. But we're talking about some of these different things. Things and we, we it, it happened in Christianity too, when you would have people would come up with these different concepts and different things. This earthly, sensual, devilish wisdom they would come up with, like the uh, um, word faith movement. That's a that's a good example. But it is crossed over into this thing um, called the Hebrew Israel, or rather resurfaced. Because I believe what all we, 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 what's happening here is. Well, they're resurrecting some ways of the, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees who were what? Primary opponents against Yeshua. And that's why you see within this thing called the Hebrew Israelite movement, a big push against uh, Yeshua, that Yeshua is not the son of Yah. It's, you, 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 can't, you can't deny it. It's, it's there. The but that's why, again, I always bring back the point that my understanding of who I was and everything came from the spirit from above. Well, not above, because the Bible said we if you're born again, the spirit is in you and he will lead and guide you into our truth. But again, he is from above. So that is to say the spirit that's from above that lives in me is the one that opened up my eyes. Through the scriptures about, hey, you are the people. You are the people. Here is the scriptures. Now, yes, it was science and different things that people brought along. But over time, and even with some of these uh, 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 interpretations of what I've seen, the, the spirit would say, no, nah, that's not that's not true. And would part us. But the overall message of what the spirit was trying to say to me and my wife you know, came alive in us. And it was not from below. It was from him. And it was not sensual. It was not devilish. It was definitely not earthly because we know for the most part on uh, on this, this thing called earth, most people think that those people over there are the people. So this thing was divinely revealed to us. Now, those that receive the knowledge that this that 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 we are the people who are not born again, they're receiving it from a earthly wisdom source. That's why they they can have the belief just like you that we are the people, but then they are the ones that's going off into this polygamy thing. They're going off into this flat earth thing. They're going off into the earth. Uh, 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 um, is it, sitting on a, 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 um, a cake stand with a, a, a glass dome over it thing. They're going off into all this crazy stuff because their understanding of it came from a earthly wisdom source. 
And therefore, along with that comes all this other stuff that is going to nullify the word of Yah because first, they're not born again. Or if they are born again, they they forgot their first love Yeshua because out of all this understanding of who we are, it's God, God pointing back to Yeshua. Why was it hid from us? It sends the, the, the Holy Spirit sends you back to what? Romans to show, hey, he's going to blind you for a period because why? You rejected my son. And then you see, hey, he would blind you. He would give it to another and then he will make you jealous because you understood. I once had all this, right? But because you designed, de 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 denied my son, I did this. It all will bring you back if the, the source of the wisdom is from above and not from below. But if not, if it's from the from from below, it's going to it's going to exalt you. It's going to exalt. Oh, wait, you know what? We are the people right now. We we uh, um, we are kings and queens and all this, this, this kind of stuff and not understand that uh, as Paul and the other apostles and Yeshua said, you don't understand that you're blind. You're miserable. You're you're in need of a savior. Yes, you were, but you came down because you refused the king of glory. Then instead of boasting, you should rather mourn. And this is this is this is the thing. And so what we have to be careful of, just like when we was in the when you was in the Christian church and they warned. People of, well, you better be careful of those that's in these fraternities, these sororities, these secret societies that's giving you all this sensual what? Sensual wisdom. See, this is this is a continuing thing with us. When we was in the Christian church, what? Okay, I, 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 uh, it's not just good enough for me to be a Christian. I got to get a deeper knowledge. I need to go into Freemasonry. I need to be a, 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 a um, I need to be a Shriner. I need to be a Alpha. I need to be an AKA to get a deeper knowledge. And a lot of times, all they would be doing is substituting the these Greek deities and stuff that they were seeking wisdom from with the name of. Jesus or the Holy Spirit, they would just substitute, but it would be the same earthly sensual wisdom. I challenge anyone that was in it or is even still in these fraternities to tell me that the knowledge and different things, not what you're doing in community service. I'm not saying that you don't do community service and do things in the community or have a brother or sisterhood but where is the stream of the agreement of y'all coming together? It's coming from a earthly, sensual, devilish source. Because what is the initiations that you have to go through in order to be part of these groups? A lot of it has to deal with sexual things, sensual things. It has to do with uh, 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 definitely sensual things. And uh, some of these female now, you, they might say in some of the female uh, black female uh, sororities that dealing with for teachers, they say, "Well, we don't do that or whatever, whatever. We're just about education." I'm, I I'm telling you, go back and look at my my video about my denouncing of Alpha Child. But it, 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 the source of it is always Minerva. The source of, and who is Minerva? Minerva is the Greek goddess of what? Wisdom. And who's sitting on her shoulder? It's the owl. When when you talk about the stuff in Bohemian Grove, where you have all the leaders of the world that go out there to, to California to those big uh, redwood trees out there and, 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 and doing all the kind of crazy stuff. When they have their cremation of care thing, which Alex Jones showed many years ago, whether or not they uh, he he actually got in there or they actually let him come in there because he was part of it, whichever one he showed that to you. And one of the things that they was 
praying to was that what? That owl, the owl of Minerva for wisdom. They said, give us wisdom. Give us the sensual wisdom to govern these people here on earth. Give us the devilish, earthly, sensual wisdom to govern this earth. And don't think when they having all these other meetings that they have in G7, G9, G20, whatever it is, that they ain't doing the same thing. They're appealing to these spirits to give them this earthly, sensual, devilish wisdom. But the end of that is what? On a bitter envy and strife. Because I'm telling you, this is what your, your source is coming from when, when you're dealing with these, these groups that's appealing to these others. Because you don't know how to divide the earthly wisdom and the wisdom was coming from above, um, from, uh, from the Holy Spirit that's living in you. If you are born again, if you are born again, he is not going to let you operate off of sensual wisdom. Because the Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit by which you are sealed unto the day of redemption. If you indeed are. That's why I did my video. You cannot live this life unless you cannot battle against the sins of the flesh unless you have been born again. There's no other way that you're going to be able to. Therefore, if anybody is, like I said, coming outside, whether it's through when you was in Christianity and they say, oh, you're going to be able to gain a better uh, knowledge of who you are or have a better life if you uh, join these, these secret societies, if you learn this fraternity and sorority. If you're not bettering yourself through the new life in Yeshua and his word alone, then it is sensual. And so when you get into this thing called Hebrew Israeliteism, or if you want to call it that, and they say, oh, you're going to better your life by going back and learning these feasts and doing these feasts. And, and renaming yourself all these names and and now so I'm saying going over to Africa to try to track down the actual Hebrew and all these different things and then now you got a debate on whether the Bantu is the, the language and whether saying the, the, the language name Yeshua or Jesus is it more power and saying it like this or whatever all this stuff is earthly, sensual, devilish wisdom, because he said it's bringing about bitter envy and strife in our people's heart. Not to mention those that are uh, 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 saying, let's go back to wearing uh, the clothes that we we wore back then, which then the uh, <laughs> how do we even know what what they're, what, how they were, we, we know that they said fringes and and, and a border blue, but everybody in the ancient world had fringes on their, their clothes. But then some say, well, you got to have fringes in a border of blue. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? We, we are, we're going back and we're doing exactly what uh, uh, James said. He said, and where there is envy and strife, there is confusion in every evil work. When you start seeing all this stuff, like I said, with some saying, well, you know, they said that the Sabbath day, it begins on Friday uh, evening, and then some say it begins sunset, and it's just confusing. Some say, well, you can't go by this this Saturday because it was, uh, that that's Saturn's day, so we got to go back and we got to recalculate all this stuff is earthly, sensual, devilish, and it's Pulling away, I'm telling you, it's so much stuff out there. It's not just the camps that you got to, camps are obvious that anybody that with any sense would know you don't need to mess with that. But I'm saying now you got these assemblies, Hebrew assemblies, or you even got some Christian churches that are trying to incorporate some of this stuff in there, which if you really look at Adventism, which is what like I came out of, they didn't have the feast and all that. They still did the Christmas and Easter and all that, but they did have the the, the dietary things they did have the the the, the 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 different understandings of whatever although again it's just total confusion this is the earthly sensual devilish stuff that we got to beware of this is 
This is why James said this in verse 17. He said, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure. It's the stuff that you understand about what, how to live this life coming out of your understanding of this Bible. Because all the quote unquote fivefold ministry was ever supposed to do was to help you as an individual gain an understanding of the, the, the different scriptures that Yah has not given you an understanding of. What did the Ethiopian Enoch say to um, uh, Philip when he was reading the book of Isaiah? He said, who is the prophet talking about himself or somebody else? And he said, how will I know except some man guide me? And when Philip broke it down to him, what Isaiah was talking about, who he was talking about, Messiah, after that, he said, okay, I understand now. Can I be baptized? What's keeping me back from being baptized? He said, okay, if you believe, yeah. And he baptized, and the Bible said the Spirit took, uh, when they came up out of the water, the, the Holy Spirit took Philip and taught, teleported him away hundreds of miles away to another place. And they said that Enoch came up out of the water. He didn't see him, but he got on his chariot and he went back to the kingdom of Candace, right? And you don't see where it says anything else that he had to, he had to keep coming back to Philip. And he gave him the understanding of what he needed because Philip was an evangelist. But once he gave him what he needed, he went on his way. But what we do as ministers, and this was in the Christian church too, is that we heap unto ourselves. Well, you got you to come here with me and now I got to spoon fed, feed you for the rest of your life. No, once you get an understanding, it's not to say that we we can't come back and break bread and you, you and there might be some questions and different things that you might come, come, come to me or some others to get answers, but we are never supposed to have been building up to ourselves uh, a fiefdom, a kingdom of ourselves, of people that depended upon us morning, noon, and night for every understanding of a, a scripture. But that's just the thing that has developed over the thousands of years. That the since the um, uh, Euro Europeans took over this thing called uh, they they call Christianity in order to make it a money making thing and to get a quote unquote full time clergy as they use because it's just like uh, at one time nations would not keep a full-time standing army they would just call up people and say look our nation is coming under attack we're going to conscript all the military aged men and we got some within our ranks that will train this group of men, and they will go out on the battlefield, and we'll fight, and if we, we will be up, build, beat the enemy back, then we can go back once the battle is over, and you go back to doing your regular uh, job, taking care of your family or whatever until the danger is past. Where in this thing are called the way, that's what it was supposed to be. It's supposed to be you going about your daily task. We come together in fellowship and get understanding of the word but then we go back out to our various places there was never a quote-unquote full-time minister that we had to have on call we prayed for ourselves we could call to the elders of of the assembly if there was one that was sick and couldn't take care but there was not none, none of this um uh we got full-time god is waiting on staff that's why um you had a you had a you had a one that might have the gift of an elder uh, 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 an elder that will have the gift of teaching or something like that. But do you, you also had other elders around so that you know there are, are, are those that had the, the the gift of pastoring or anything like that. But they were not a full time thing. And in fact, Paul stated he said, look. While we were among you, we worked with our hands. And then when we, you know, did whatever we did with our job, then we would go and we would teach. We didn't, we didn't, uh, he said we could have done that. But when the Gentiles took over, they said, no, we're going to have a full-time uh, clergy. 
and all these Greek uh, and Roman uh, uh, temples that have gone into disrepair since you got all these people that are turning to Christianity, we got to use them for something. So that's getting in and then we'll get the people to give us money to keep these temples up. Why do you look at some of the Greek amphitheaters and different things and you look at the design of a lot of the Christian churches, they, they were the same. They were the same. You, we, the transition happened. So it's, it's, a, it's a miracle that within this system that y'all could have saved anybody, but he did. But just as I have shown in many of my teachings, most of the time when people really were born again, you will see how a lot of them would they would they would move out of they would move away from this stuff because it was like I I I know it's something that's not right. I can't put it on my finger on it, but in the fullness of time, more and more Yah has shown us over time. And now, of course, our understanding is now that you see some of these Protestant churches coming back under what many agree that the Catholic Church was uh, the, the whore of Babylon. But they, they forgot the part where he said she had daughters, too. And that Protestantism was one of those daughters. And then now in the last 20, 30 years, you have seen where it's been a lot of Protestant churches that have sign concordats and covenants with the, the, to come back under Catholicism. And, and some of them say, well, you know what? We really never left. Because if you looked at certain things they did, now you see the same things that were going on in the Catholic Church with the abuse and all this stuff. Now it's, 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 it's coming up in a lot of problems. I mean, it always has been there, but maybe not to the, the degree that it was when they full fled just went back into it. You see what I'm saying? And so all this goes back to is the source of your wisdom from above, is it pure? Is it coming from your pure, your pure understanding of Yah's pure word as pure as 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 pure as we can get because we know that they have tampered with it. But through the understanding that the Holy Spirit gives you as a believer, the, the, the word that you have, right, uncut, uh, without any um, uh, uh, wicked uh, and, and twisted uh, interpretation of it, it it's, it's, it's pure and it's peaceable. It's it's something that's supposed to bring a harmony in your life. Is it gentle? Not saying that if you're a sinner and you're hearing the word of Yah that um, it's supposed to make you feel comfortable. Or even if you are a believer that is caught up in sin, that it's supposed to be quote unquote gentle. But it's like Yah saying, you know, when I like with Elijah. Elijah was always seeing Yah in the fire. He was seeing Yah in the earthquake. And Yah said, no, I'm not just in the fire. I'm not just in the earthquake. But he said he heard a still, small voice. Because sometimes sinners or even believers that are in sin, sometimes Yah will come at them with a fire. Sometimes he will come at them with an earthquake. But then sometimes he's going to come in a still, small, gentle voice, but still has power. He said it's easily to be entreated, meaning that if you receive, Yah is about results. That if you get, if you receive his son, if you repent of your sins, that's it. You mean it was that easy? Yeah, it's easy. It's that easy to appease, to appease you by being obedient to what your son said. Yeah, that's all I need. I don't need you to go walk the burning sands of Egypt. I don't need you to do that. I don't need you to 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 go down in the river Jordan seven times like uh, Naaman, uh, like his um his 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 uh uh you know assistant said Naaman. 
if he had told you to go bathe in all these different streams, you would you would have did. He said, but he only asked you to go to the River Jordan. You getting him say, said, well, is that the best river that I can go to? He said, but it doesn't matter. If he just telling you to go to River Jordan Bay and you lose your leprosy, what is it? It's he's not trying to make it hard. It's easy, easily to be entreated, right? He said, if all those that call upon the name of the Lord or Yah shall be saved. How easy is that? He said, that's all. No, you got to repent. You got to turn from your sin, definitely. But if you do and you call on his name, you'll say. He said, without partiality, meaning Hebrew, Gentile, whoever, all, whoever call upon my name shall be saved. And without hypocrisy, it's none of his hypocrisy where it is do as I say, not as I do. And it's none of that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, well, I know I'm the pastor or whatever or whatever. But, you know, because I have so much more responsibilities when I, I, I say I got to get double the grace that you got. No, the Bible says that your penalty is going to be double because you should know you have more responsibility. So, no, you definitely don't. He said it's not no hypocrisy in Yah. Yah is not calling you to do something that his son has not done. But many of these people that you're following behind, they're going to call you to do stuff that they themselves would not do. And he said the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Meaning after you are born again, the Bible said follow peace with all men, holiness without no man shall see Yah. So I'm here to tell you whether you are saying you are in Christianity or Hebrew Israelitism or whateverism or whatever, but if you are seeking Christ, if you're seeking Yeshua, or if you are already in Yeshua or Jesus, make sure the source of the wisdom that you're getting is not coming from below, that it's coming from the Holy Spirit from above, which is living in you. And if he's not in you, then you need to be born again because the source of your wisdom, not saying that the wisdom, the knowledge of being an engineer and all that stuff is bad. Not saying that, but in the end, for your eternal soul, that wisdom is not going to be profitable for you when it comes to eternal life. But we're talking about dealing with your, your, your life, your spiritual life. Make sure that the knowledge that you have is not an earthly knowledge. It's not a central knowledge. Go back to this book of James. Read the whole third chapter. But, in, but for sure, read verses 14, 15, and 16. Uh, actually, um, read verses 14 through 18, ask the Most High Yah how to implement this into your life because it is so important. Because now, like I said, in, in Christianity, uh, and this has been and, 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 and this has been for thousands of years, you have had so many times where these different cults and stuff have come up. You had um, and, you know, like I said, you definitely had Catholicism. And then within Catholicism, they had stuff that was going on. But even when Protestantism came in, you start seeing a lot of stuff coming up, right? Um, different groups. You had the Jehovah Witness. You had Adventism. Uh, we had Pentecostalism, where some of them took the, 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 the need for the message that the Holy Spirit needed to be active in one life, but then they got people off into a lot of earthly and sensual and devilish wisdom. And you can see a lot of that that came about um, in the 30s, 40s, and even the 50s with a lot of these healing revivals where a lot of these, uh, uh, they call great men of God, William Branham and all these people were tapping into earthly sensual and devilish wisdom and they was they was leading so many people astray right where they was falling after uh angels and different things and people was not able to discern between it right and some of these people still hold some of these people in high esteem and you looked at like i said some of the denominationalisms 
like like Koji, where like I said, when Bishop, when their Bishop Mason died, and they put his body under, uh, they embalmed his body and put it under glass uh, a case, and they kept it in his office all those decades, and people would make pilgrimages to Memphis to go see his body and to touch the thing because his body was sitting there in his office in Memphis and all this kind of crazy stuff. People was making pilgrimages saying, you know, I got to get to the convocation in Memphis and get to that room at least once in my life. What's the difference between that and the Muslims going over to Mecca to the cobblestone? It was all, all this stuff was central. Then, of course, like I said, with this Hebrew thing, sensual, a lot of sensuality came in, uh, uh, you know, with the um, uh, Yahweh being Yahweh with them back in the, the 70s. Of course, it didn't rise to popularity or whatever, but it, 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 it kept cropping back up, right? And when the, the awakening, the real awakening came, because the Hebrew Israelite with the camp, one, nine West camps and all that had already been going it all got swept up and, and some of those that might got an understanding of who they were start going into understanding this. They grab hold to a lot of this earthly, sensual, devilish wisdom that was around from a lot of these camps and, 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 and some uh, Yahweh being Yahweh uh, uh, groups that had rechanged their name. And now you just why you're seeing all this crazy stuff that's going on now, especially like I said, what you see with the uh, uh, Dow and all these other things, polygamous and, and it's and it's so much more. And that's not even talk about the stuff of those that went over to Africa to try to tap into. And now we ain't got this thing where um, they got people, you know, talking about uh, Ethiopia and Lalabella and all these things. And that's not even talk about the streams of, uh, anti uh, 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 science where they, they're going to the uh, the flat earth theory which has its own streams of sensual uh, 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 devilish wisdom when you talk talking about you know going over the edge of the earth and all these other kinds of things it's all crazy key thing is you must be born again and make sure that you are not operating out of a solical uh, wisdom, but you're operating out of a spiritual wisdom. You know, John, the book of John, 1 John says it better than anything I can say. And then after that, we're going to uh, go... Um, we're going to go to 1 John and let's see, I think it's 1 John, um, yeah, 1 John 4. Chapter start verse one said, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of Yah, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of Yah. Every spirit that confesseth that Yeshua Mashiach is come in the flesh is of Yah. And every spirit that confesseth not that Yeshua is come in the flesh is not of Yah. And this is that spirit of anti. Christ, whereof ye have heard that it, uh, where whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Ye are of Yah, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. They are of the world, wherefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Ye are of Yah, and he that knoweth Yah heareth us. And he that is not of Yah here, not us. Hereby know ye the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Here we go. He said, try the spirits, 
whether they be of Yah. And how are you going to if you don't have Yah's spirit in you already? But even if you have your, the spirit of Yah in you, you got to listen to the Holy Spirit and grieve him not. And he said, those spirits that confess, those people that have the spirit of the Antichrist in them, is they're gonna they 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 can't they can't say that um uh Yeshua is the son of Yah. They can't do it. They can say it with their mouth, but eventually what is in their heart is going to be revealed because you can see in other religions where they will in Islam and other. Oh, yeah, we believe that Yeshua is the son of. But in their works, how they do, you will see that they're not right. And so it's the same thing with this sensual wisdom. It's going to eventually draw you away from the simplicity, which is in Yeshua. And once it does that, then, you know. It is not from the spirit. Be careful of these cults out here. Some of them are subtle. Some of them are obvious like Jim Jones, but a lot of them are subtle in, Christ in Christianity and in those that are in this thing called the Hebrew Israelite movement. It will become very obvious, but if you are born of the spirit, if you, you, um, no, he will show you the spirit of the Antichrist. So with that, I'm going to ask you to give this um, video a thumbs up. I'm going to ask you to leave a comment. I'm going to ask you to subscribe. I'm going to ask you to be led by the spirit of Yeshua, not the spirit of error. Be blessed.